Okay, so <clears throat> if I understand this right, um, if you're going to go to this personal path, I'd have to play a card that's one, two, three to be able to get there, even though it's only me that's going on the personal path and the tokens st would stay here uh, or the pawn would stay here. I believe I still have to play a three, which is going to be no problem for red because red just um, turned their, like took all their cards from their discard pile. So it's a piece of cake to get a three. So he's going to play this one here. Um, and we'll move one, two, and then you take one of your little octagons and move it to that space, which is the third space, to show that you have entered a personal path. Uh, we're going to take the top card of this deck, and it says, the moment travels inside the fractal. Um, so. Actually, I'm going to play this one down here because it's going to have a token. I want to make sure that it's separate. Uh, so then you take your other octagon and you place it on the first spot. Now, yes, I'm assuming that's the first spot there and you're moving up and out. <laughs> so the first spot is an intense moment. When you enter this personal path, you don't experience that moment. You're just entering it uh, to prepare for your journey. Now, if it was something good, I could choose to next turn play a zero and then experience that spot. But in this case, since it's something bad, I'm going to not even fuck with it. And uh, I'll be moving on to either picking up the card or this diamond. I don't think picking up the three that I just discarded is going to do me much good, so I'll probably play my other three. I don't know, we'll, we'll come to that. But anyway, so I've entered on a personal path, and then back with our main group of uh, eaters there. We've come across one of these squares again, which in this case uh, means we pick up one of these tokens, turn it around, and it's an environment that everybody else is on which now at this point, since none of us have experienced it yet, people can choose to play a zero if we want to experience this environment. But as we've seen, this one, for example, was a horrible one. Um, although now with everybody having their cards, we might be in better shape to experience an environment. So we'll see what happens there. And uh, yeah, so that's the personal path. Um, and what happens is when it comes to Red's turn again, uh, obviously red will keep continuing on this path uh, until they're completed. It's going to take them out of this pawns game so the pawn will keep moving around and, and the, the good thing is that uh, if there's any bad experiences that happen they won't affect red but it's obviously if there's anything good that happens red won't reap the benefits of that either because they're off in their own little world having their own personal little trip here. So. Uh, yeah, that's the personal path. That's very cool. And then once Red has completed, this will go into Red's victory pile where uh, at the end of the game, there will be extra experience points for achieving these moments here. So that's that. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> we've really come a ways here. Um, this whole section was just, it really just gave us a beating. Um, you can see kind of where everybody's sitting here. Uh, red seems to be doing pretty decent as far as things collected and uh, for that matter, so has yellow. Uh, brown isn't doing horribly, but you know, they're really feeling, uh, feeling the pinch of this one. So it's red's turn and red has moved us, we were on this spot here, and red has moved us to the new, um, the part where we open up the board again. Now, yellow is still in a, uh, on a personal path there, but I think opening it, like I, I know that he's still there, so I, I don't think we're gonna lose much by like taking this away, uh, and uh, we all remember that he's there kind of thing. So let's start with this first. So the first thing that happens here is um, 
the board will reveal the next section. And as we can see, we're getting into the mantras section here, um, which, wow, I don't know how we could have, uh, I guess when we were at the fire pit, uh, when we were at that fire, we could have done the option of um, gaining a mantra card because Red is the only person that has one so far. Nobody else has one, but we'll see how it goes here as we play. So now the other thing with this, uh, I guess we'll, we'll cover one thing at a time. So it's also a face, so that means we're entering our, uh, we're finished our second hour of our trip there. So we'll go to the, the big old board and there hasn't been much movement or addition or anything. Uh, brown and yellow are the only ones on there. So brown is going to gain the, the second hour token there. Uh, so we'll give that to him up there. And then of course, like we said, the brown cube comes off. Uh, so it's looking pretty sparse along here. Everybody's pretty down low on their trip, so it's it's a tough game. I, I wonder, I don't know, I just wonder how it would differ having more players or less players for that matter. Um, it just doesn't seem like there was a lot of opportunities to uh, re-experience some of these spaces or maybe that's what we should have been doing playing that zero more so we could re-experience some of the places that were solo type uh, um, experiences so we could gain more on these graphs and everything but we're pretty darn low at one point yellow was up to like six I think uh, which came in handy so then the other thing that happens on this one which is the reason why I'm kind of catching you up is on this, there's that red blotch above him called like the, the jelly, I guess. And what it does, it's a, it's a special action. So from now on, after this space, let me just pull out a card here to show you. So if you remember on the, on your kind of character card, they count as a two. From this point on, uh, you can use it as a zero to a three, which will come in handy because then that means that we'll have two zeros in our hand, you know, um, which could really help us out. So that's gonna make that change. You can now use that special power, I guess, or that special ability for your cards. Uh, the other thing that happens is, let me just get the book here, sorry. Um, uh, when the jelly space is reached for the remainder of the game, a player may at any time during their turn use one special action. Uh, this is a one-time action. After it has been used, no other special action can be played. This, spe this special action does not count as a player's turn. So you can use it as a part of your turn, basically. So the choices are you can add two focus to any track or tracks. So you can divide them up, I guess, one each. Oh, sorry, uh, yes, that's correct, yeah, add, add them. Um, increase two nervous system energy on any track. Um, avoid the effects of not having a mantra. This special action can be used on another player's action. Uh, flip breath token to deep breathing or gain two paradox. So basically the explanation is, um, in addition to the use of a special action, all identity mood cards can be played as zero to three movement explained in mood card section. You are now aware of the deeper functions of this game. So you've reached a heightened state of your trip. Uh, so that's allowing you to tap into these other special actions. Actually, I should leave that page open. Um, so yeah, I mean, that opens up a new element to the game for sure but like I said it just doesn't feel like there's been a ton of spaces to claim a lot of things like get more mantras and, and all that uh, so 
maybe it's playing it a bit differently. Maybe it's saving those bigger cards once you start your deck and experiencing more of the squares. It's just when you get to these sections that have these fiery red ones, these intense actions, you kind of want to move through them as quickly as possible, especially when you're dealing with one that's like here, for example, a six. Um, if you're way down here, you're going to take some major damage. So anyway, that's where we're at on the game. Uh, so we've done the head, we've dealt with that. So that's the experience that we've had to deal with. I'm not sure what the three means in it. I don't think much of anything because I see uh, the other one has had it as well too. I think that's just the symbol. Let's see. Our focus all most focused. Okay, so it's just that's what the symbol is. So there we go. So we're now into our third hour, which is getting trippier. And uh, we've opened up the board. So um, I'm going to keep playing. And when we get to these mantras here, maybe I'll, I'll bring you back and you can, uh, you can check it out again. Okay. Okay. So um, yellow completed their personal path. Uh, so they got a little bonus there of an awakening um, or enlightenment or I always want to call it a yeah I always want to call it a enlightenment but it's awakening and now they're with us for the game so then red took their turn moved us to which got us onto the the B mantra um, I've moved the I've removed the pieces already but red had one and yellow had a B so for the B's if you look on them, it allows you to move up two spaces on the nervous system track. So red chose to move two there, yellow chose to move uh, one there and one over there because they were down at zero. So here's a couple of things. So brown did not have a B, so we refer to this card here. And when it's on a B space, you can see that um, what you'll collect are those. If you don't have it, you lose one there. So that's why he's down at zero over here. Um, I chose to move him down one spot on that track. Um, and another thing I just read too, so you can see we go through all over here. There's a must do section here and there's this symbol that says A to D with some arrows. When we hit this must do section, that's something that um, we'll have to get rid of everything that's, uh, all of our mantras that are A to D from what I understand. Now, in the book, I thought it said, oh no, that's, that's incorrect. All mantras collected but one are returned to, are returned during the first must do actions in panel F. So yeah. So if you have an E in your hand, you'll get to hold on to it. Um, everything other than E's get returned back after we've finished this track, which is a, an interesting development as well. So that left us on the red person. And now we're going to Mr. Brown. So I mean, Mr. Brown has a couple of choices. He's got a D. Um, a D is three spaces away it would penalize everybody else um, and get him a couple of benefits. But I mean, then we also have this for some more enlightenment. I think it's, it's probably better because he's a bit behind if uh, he plays his, oh, hey, look, oh, there we go. Well, because now we're past the jelly. So here's where this comes into effect. Let me just sit down here. So it turns out he doesn't have a three in his hand, but since we've passed that space that allows that jelly, which is right there, um, he can now use this card as a zero, a one, a two, or a three. So he's going to use that one as a three, and uh, that way he can still make it to his one, two, third spot there. And put these over there. So then the same thing 
applies here, so I'll take you through it this time. So his D this time gets him one awakening and a bump up on any one of the nervous system tracks. So we'll go to our awakenings here, put it there, and um, we should probably get him on his way up because he has nowhere more to go down there. He should start building here as we enter these intense moments. And then again, so no D's here, um, no D's here, but a C. So that means that each of them, if we look on our little cheat sheet here, uh, the penalty for not having it is bumping down one on the nervous system track. So that's yellow first. Um, so let's have yellow and red. Actually, let's have them both bump down on this side just because I kind of like where they're sitting there. They're both at fives on that track. So I think that's going to be a bonus. Um, and then that gets returned. So there you have it. There's the, there's the mantras. Uh, boy, it really feels like I should have a lot more of them though, seeing as we're in this world here. Ah, uh, there you go. I'm going to carry on. We've really had a uh, interesting turn of events. So once we passed this area there um, with the must do and we had to give up mantras, um, everybody started going off on personal paths. So I believe it was brown was back here, uh, yellow was up here, then red got on one here, yellow's now on one there, brown's on one there. So now all the players are on their own personal paths, which is pretty incredible. Um, this one is Ancestors Echo. Um, this one was very cool. It's called Eternity. So at the end of each of the cards, there's a must-do space. So you can't go past that one. So on the one that's in Eternity, the must-do action is go on a personal path. So it's going to be two in a row here for red. Um, and then it's for yellow. His last one is Gain a Cube on the... Uh, um, um, on the time or on the drums. Now that's something that happened to Red as well. One of the things that he ended up buying because there was a fire symbol that he got to go on to was uh, two cubes. You can see there he bought two cubes, put one on each and you can see that there's been quite a jump here with yellow sitting at uh, 10, 9, 8, 7 and then Red sitting at 8. Um, these guys are even. Brown is really falling behind when it comes to the the track, but hopefully we can make some of those uh, changes because he's got an environment card on his here, um, which could give him a chance to boost up those levels. Uh, unbelievable. So it's really, this is where it's really just all of a sudden, I thought it might be hazardous coming around this corner because you can see all these intense moments just littered, but we managed to avoid them. I mean, nobody really took full advantage of all these, um, uh, the shaman drum, uh, but at least we got to avoid those moments and uh, got to dodge some real damage. So just incredible, really, really incredible. Uh, and it's really made a difference and a turn in the game. I mean, everybody's doing pretty well all of a sudden with bits and bobs that they've collected. Everybody's done at least one personal path already. Yellow already has two under his belt and working on a third. So incredible, really, really cool. Uh, a really nice twist of events here. So yeah. That's all I wanted to show you there. Just check out some of those cards again and uh, I'll talk to you in a bit. So, um, we've now hit uh, this spot where we open up the board again. So I just wanted to show you. Um, nothing else much happened. Uh, as you can see, yellow and red are still on personal paths. So. This one now is abandoned time for red because as you remember on his previous card, it was eternity. So it ended up having to play another card, which is fine. Red, yellow's had a little bit of issues here, but nothing too worrisome because uh, his number on the track was pretty high. It just went down one after successfully 
uh, dealing with an intense moment. So that happened there and Brown moved us to an environment where he got to gain a cube onto there. It's not going to help him win the fourth hour token, but uh, at least uh, at least he's on the board now. He's on the map. So let's open it up and have a look. So here we go. The next bit of our game board uh, reveals this track here. So we come around and now we're expanding onto this section over here. Looks like a Ooh, shit, man. Looks like some crazy eyeball action happening in there. Um, so that's going to lead us around, around, and over to here. And then we're going to get into, eventually we're going to get into these talking uh, moments here where we'll get to play with that board. Uh, and for that one, I'm going to have to refer to, there's there was a message board, I guess, because in the book, the instructions for the talking board were still a little vague and people were playing it wrong. So I think Nate had posted on, uh, I think it's the Board Game Geek message board, I, I believe so, I can't remember which website. Anyway, he posted updated rules where he really made it clear. Uh, so I'm hoping to, I'll print those off and add them to the uh, instruction book here and we'll get to play that properly. Um, no mantras coming up yet, so which is good because I had a few chances to buy mantras back there and I didn't. Uh, I couldn't remember what was coming up, but it was a good gamble. Um, and a lot of positive things up and around here, so a lot of things to lose down this track, so we'll see what that leads. And uh, yeah, there you go. We're nearing the end there. There's going to be one more flip open and we'll be nearing the end of the game. Um, just to reiterate, this section has been really, really incredible. Um, I think it just, it worked out just so well that uh, it really brought me full on back into the game again. Uh, not that I ever totally left, but this was definitely a section that played really well for us and we just had a lot of success as, a, as our three player game. Um, obviously all of those kind of dynamics will change with two players or five players because you're going to get there quicker or you'll get there slower depending and who knows how the cards will play out but with a three player game the way we played that that was really profitable for us we all did really well uh, so there you have it the next section of the board <laughs>